And good late Tuesday evening there to you. It's about 11 o'clock p.m. here on the East Coast in Charlotte, North Carolina. I am weather ranger and meteorologist Mike Griffith. It is September 20th, 2016, and it's getting uh, close to the end of September here, and uh, we're going to be beginning uh, the month of October here in about 11 days or so, and we want to find out what is in store as far as climate. What can we expect uh, for the month of October? And uh, what I'll go into detail here is um, the climate, the temperature, and also precipitation outlooks uh, for October um, and how we are going to end into uh, December, uh, September, excuse me, how we're going to end September here. Well, it has been uh, really warm here in the East Coast. There's only a little bit of uh, negative temperature anomaly, cool temperature anomaly due to the remnants of Julia just sitting there right off the Cape Hatteras and the uh, Carolina coast. This is as we head into Wednesday. Uh, very warm here in the east from Maine, Nova Scotia, all the way to Iowa. Extreme, extremely warm into Nebraska and all the way down into the south. So it's been very warm uh, as far as uh, the month of September goes in general as a whole. And we actually have a backdoor cold front moving down here uh, this uh, weekend into Monday morning. So right there is a pool of cold air, as you can see it uh, up here in uh, eastern Canada, just southeast of the Hudson Bay right here. This cold air will spill all the way down into North Carolina as we go into this weekend. There's the cold building right there. As you can see, you can watch this little uh, bubble of uh, below normal uh, temperatures over here. And uh, by the way, this is the GEFS, so this is an ensemble. Uh, it's a combination of a bunch of different models, and this is just the mean or the average, as uh, this is a better suggestion of what will happen rather than just one single deterministic model. More likely scenario when you use ensembles, and that's why I love ensemble forecasting. So there comes the backdoor cold front and the cold air uh, as we head into uh, early Monday morning there. A uh, nice uh, little fall chilly outbreak of air here moves down over uh, Virginia and the Carolinas, uh, maybe even down into Georgia as we wake up on Monday morning. Very chilly here from the Carolinas all the way up to Maine and uh, also up into Canada. Uh, but then those temperatures rebound quickly as we head uh, closer to the end of this month. Uh, the 28th, it's still cool out there. It's still chilly. Uh, and the 29th, and we're going to have some more heat uh, that actually is building out here in the plains and the, over to Dakotas and also into Nebraska. And this heat will kind of push eastward as we uh, begin the month of October. Now, yes, there will be random fall outbreaks. There will be short-lived uh, little chilly blasts of air coming down from Canada and uh, down into Virginia and the Carolinas through the 29th. Uh, but overall... Um, they're not going to last, and they're not. They're gonna. They're gonna warm up. See, there we go into the 30th, the last day of September, and we start to get a little toasty here east of the Mississippi River in, in the eastern United States as we head into September 30th here. Interestingly enough, very warm air here over the North Pole, and uh, that really kind of puts a damper on things as far as any type of uh, immediate cold air outbreaks. Uh, you, you really, if you eliminate your cold air at the source up here, well, then how do you get it to funnel down and filter into the eastern U.S. when it's not really that cold up here? So this has a potential of being a very warm uh, beginning here of October. And there we go into October 1st. Uh, we're going into the uh, first week of October here, remaining warm in the east here still warm uh, through the second uh, not a whole lot of change here through the third and then as we go into the fourth it looks like a lot of the u.s is warm big ridge of high pressure more than likely is going to be responsible for the above normal and warmer than normal temperatures here across the middle part of the united states and this big ridge is almost something similar that we've seen in july where it's just a big dome of hot air and that is through October 4th, and it just remains kind of mild here across the eastern United States and maybe even all the United States for that matter. Um, so the first week of October, uh, not really looking at a whole bunch of uh, chilly air outbreaks at all. In fact, we're looking at a warm 
start to October here uh, in the east. It is not looking like it's going to be really uh, that chilly. Now, there will be a couple of uh, chilly air outbreaks uh, to end the month of September between now and September 30th. Uh, so really chilly air, but it's not going to last. It's going to moderate, and we're going to start off the month of October with a very warm uh, air mass. Let me show you what I'm talking about here as far as the uh, government's uh, prediction uh, models. If I can get you on the right page here. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is from NOAA. And this is the CFS V2 or Climate Forecast System version 2 uh, temperature anomalies for the month of October. And this is the model output. Very warm air here over northern Canada, including the Northwest Territories, northern Alaska. And this is our source of cold air if we were to get any. And when it's this warm, it's going to be really tough to have a cold October because it's just going to be... Uh, too warm to our north, upstream at the source of the air. Mostly above normal here in the northeast, uh, possibly best seasonal down through Virginia and the North Carolina, down into Florida. Uh, but if we're this warm up here in Canada, we're going to be really warm here over the eastern United States uh, through the month of October. Um, we can really bet on that according to this uh, climate model. Let's take a look at November more of the same that really warm air just kind of sticks up there over uh, northern canada and it looks almost like we were in a el nino rather than a la nina we're supposed to be in a la nina this year but from what i heard um, it's been canceled the la nina watch has been canceled uh, the uh, really warm pacific uh, waters uh, where there were supposed to be cold pacific waters they were canceled uh, the outlook was canceled and it's just kind of like almost like a neutral but, I mean, this is a lot to watch right here as far as warm air here for November and into uh, December of 2016. Extremely warm here, almost hot for Alaska and into the Yukon Territory here of Canada. Now, the western part of the United States, cooler than average, more than likely just a lot of mountain snows through December. Uh, some snow could make it out into uh, South Dakota and also Nebraska here as the temperatures out here will be below normal. But again, really, really chilly air is not going to happen because of the source is being choked off by this warm air. Really, really warm eastern part of the United States here in December. If you're in the Carolinas, anywhere in the south, Georgia, South Carolina, if you want to grow stuff um, indoors, you might not need that much heat. You might be able to get away with it in a greenhouse because it will be a warm December according to this climate model. Now, here's what's interesting. In January, things flip just like a, a, a deck of cards or a single card, I should say, it just flips over. And then we start going cold here in the United States, and we start getting colder than usual here in uh, January of 2017. Could even just be right after the new year when we start to get this ridge pattern here in the west and then a trough pattern here in the east, and it's just an open door for cold air to spill in from Canada through January of 2017. Same thing for February, and that's what we're looking at right here. And uh, this is actually more extreme. Looks like extreme cold as we go into February of 2017. And as we have below normal temperatures from the Hudson Bay all the way eastern Canada, which will allow much cold air to spill down here into the eastern United States. A very cold February, it's looking like for 2017. And then as we take it into March, um, we slowly start to warm up again back here in the southeast. In the long range, uh, this is more like just a trend rather than anomaly than an anomaly. Uh, still very cold here in the northeast, though, as we head into March of 2017. Uh, but then we uh, flip back to uh, warmer temperatures than usual here in uh, March of 2017. Now, we can take a look at some of the uh, precipitation here. The um, uh, North, North America, if I can find this picture. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at precipitation anomalies here for the month of October um, with the red and the orange being very dry and the green colors uh, being very moist uh, compared to usual or compared to average. And we're looking at a very dry October here in the east, uh, including Virginia, even more so through Tennessee and all the way down to Florida. Uh, so some of those orange groves down there are going to have trouble um, 
staying uh, uh, wet and having a plentiful harvest down here. Uh, looking really dry here across the, much of the eastern United States here for October. So this will affect the growing season uh, here in the United in the eastern part of the United States as far as harvest goes, uh, because we're not going to have the water here to um, actually help the plants and crops grow and stuff. And it's also going to be warm out too, so hot and dry for October. And that's what I've been saying for a while here. Uh, let's look at November. Um, also, signals are also indicating a dry in the east here for November. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, rain here in the east. Uh, no more than usual uh, seasonal amount of rain, but most of the areas here are going to be below normal and dry for November of 2016. As we head into December, the southeast especially looking very dry here, and also this drought may also uh, peak up into Virginia as well. And it's not going to be a whole lot of moisture here in the east as the mountains are going to cut off this uh, moisture here to the west. Looking west, looking wet here over Texas and Louisiana and over the central part of the United States here for December. So uh, lots of uh, snow possible if it gets cold enough here. Uh, more than likely to happen in the northern plains, but down here just not cold enough. Also very warm here and uh, I should say uh, wet and cold. So there will be a lot of Pacific uh, storm tracks here. This is precipitation um, over the west. Uh, what they'll do is is they'll track south of that and across uh, the southern part of the United States here for December. And then as we head into January, we were saying it's going to be very cold here in the United S eastern part of the United States, uh, but also very dry. So it could be once the pattern flips, it's going to just be a cold, dry winter. Not so much wet and snowy, a colder, dry winter here across the eastern part of the United States as we head into February more of the same here in the extreme eastern part of the United States we could even have a drought this winter as we head into February and March here uh, it starts to pick up a little bit as far as the rainfall uh, but if I take it back into February uh, we could have a drought here in the eastern part of the United States this winter second half of the winter is looking cold at this point uh, with uh, a drought and the beginning half of the winter is looking much warmer and drier than usual, including the month of October. So uh, make sure that you uh, take your precautions for watering your crops and making sure that you have enough moisture uh, because everything is looking really dry through February as of right now. That's all I have for you for the long range outlook covering this winter. I am Charlotte Weather Ranger Meteorologist Mike Griffith. Make sure you like us on Facebook. Uh, Charlotte Weather Ranger, you can type that into the search bar. Also, go to charlotte.weatherranger.com. If you get a certificate error, uh, I'm still working on that. Don't worry about that. Uh, the site is secure. Um, all the transactions on here are good. And make sure that you uh, check out some of our uh, monthly membership options. Personal membership is only $0.99 cents a month. And if you own a business, um, I cater forecast especially to you and to your business uh, for only $10 a month as of right now, uh, personal consultation and for your locality, specifically your zip code. Hope to hear from you. Thanks a lot. I am uh, meteorologist Mike Griffith for Charlotte Weather Ranger. Have a great time and have a good rest of your week, everybody.